Welcome to this Spring Tutorial from In 28 Minutes. Before we look into the specific topic at hand, let's get an overview of what we are trying to do at In 28 Minutes to make learning Spring easy. We have a repository on Git, github.com slash In 28 Minutes, Spring In 28 Minutes. The link you would find below the video where we have all the code examples that we are going to discuss now. All those are present in the Git repository. So if you go to spring in 28 minutes, there are a lot of example Maven projects which would help you learn spring very easily. We start with simple examples and discuss things like JDBC, aspect oriented programming, MVC and all that kind of stuff. You should find examples in here. If you go further down, you should also see how you can install these examples which are used in this particular tutorial. So you can click this link, takes you to a video which shows how you can install all the code that you would need to be able to run all the examples that we would discuss now. Let's now get started with the specific topic of this particular video. When we first started developing web applications with Java, talking to a database was a very tedious thing. When I want to talk to the database, I need a database connection. I get the connection, then I would do a prepared statement and set the arguments. And one of the most trickiest part was making sure that the exception handling is right. And also I close the statements and the connections as needed. And this was one of the most trickiest things to do. And when Spring JDBC came in, it made a lot of these kind of things easier. Whatever you're seeing in the screen right now is about 18 lines of code. With Spring, you can do probably the whole thing, Spring JDBC, you can do this in four or five lines. I mean, at a later point in time, we also had famous ORM frameworks and a lot of us started using ORM. But if you want to do simple JDBC without uh, the complications around it, probably Spring JDBC is a good option. As you already know, the code for this particular example is in in 28 minutes, GitHub Spring in 28 minutes. And the specific example that we are looking at is for Spring JDBC. You can import this project into Eclipse and you should be all set. One important thing to note about this example is that this ex running this example does not need an external database. So we don't really connect to a SQL or an Oracle database. What we have in here, we make use of an inbuilt HSQL database. And that is the reason why you would see a HSQL DB in the uh, thing in here. I mean, in the dependencies here. And also we have a script uh, which runs. So the DB file dot script is the script which contains the data which we would need to be able to run this example. All this running and configuring the SQL database, HSQL database and running the script happens automatically. The reason why I have done this is because now you can really focus on learning JDBC and Spring JDBC rather than trying to set up a database, establish a connection to it, start it up, create the tables in there and all that kind of stuff. Now you don't really need to do that. You can directly start focusing on the examples at hand. The class file which we are looking at is to do data service.java. What we want to do now is actually we want to take this and we want to start using Spring JDBC to do this particular. If you look at the dependencies for this project, the most important dependency is Spring JDBC 4.1.6 release. I mean, we are using Spring JDBC, Spring version 4. But yeah, I mean, it should be the same with an older version of Spring. Let's get started. So what would happen with this to do data service is actually doing a, a few insert statements. So it's inserting a few things and then deleting uh, to do based on whatever we call. And it can also retrieve all the to do's and show it on the screen. We have a main method where we are calling insert to do's, delete to do's and retrieve all to do. So we are actually inserting a to do with this particular definition and we are deleting a to do and we are also retrieving the to do's and printing them on the output. So I can do a right click run as Java application and you would see a lot of things printed on the console. So what you see on the pr console printed is the list of to do's that were in the database after the whole thing. So to make it easy, I would just kind of, these are the list of to do's that are there in the database as of now. Our aim in this particular tutorial is to move away from using normal JDBC and kind of use Spring JDBC. I would copy this particular thing to do 
data service into the same folder and say Spring JDBC2. I already have a class with Spring JDBC, so I'll just call this Spring JDBC2. If you can see in here, we are making a lot of use of the db.connection. So if we look at every method, we are using the db.connection. I don't really want to handle the connection myself and Spring provides me a way of doing that. So what I would do is I don't want to really focus on the connection, how to get it and all that kind of stuff. I would kind of abstract it to the Spring and I would use a Spring interface called JDBC template. So usually all this stuff about creating the JDBC template and giving the connection to it would always be in the uh, Spring configuration so that we don't really need to talk about how the connection is established and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I would do is I would create a JDBC template. A JDBC template is kind of one of the core interfaces. Like, like if you look at the documentation, then it says something like, JDBC template is the central class in the JDBC core package. So it makes the use of JDBC very, very, very simple. So it kind of abstract away the core JDBC flow from the application code. And it helps the application code to focus on what is the SQL I want to ex uh, execute and how do I get the results from that particular SQL. First thing I'm doing is creating a JDBC template. This JDBC template which I'm creating can be reused over across multiple queries. So I would start with this JDBC template. So that's the first change that we are doing. Let's first change the insert to do method. So if we look at it right now, it's doing an insert of a to do query and it's doing exception handling, a lot of stuff. So how do I convert this to Spring JDBC? Now, Look at the magic of Spring JDBC and how it makes it very easy. I want to make use of the JDBC template which we created earlier. So I'll start with JDBC template. Here we are doing an insert in Spring JDBC. Anything that does a change to the database is an update. So whether it's an insert, an update, you can use the update. And to the update, I can pass in a number of arguments. So if you see this, this particular method allows a multiple set of arguments. So all that I mean, need to do now is update what is the SQL I want to use insert to do query and what are the arguments that I would need to pass are to do dot get description is the first argument and the next argument is to do dot is done all this dummy code of exception handling everything else can go away that's it so we replaced around 20 lines of code with one simple line of code and this would do all that it was all that the earlier code was doing now let's do a similar magic on the delete query as well so how do i do the delete i'll just copy the earlier one because i don't really want to spend a lot of time update the query i want to execute is delete and the parameter i want to pass is just the id so i can remove all this stuff and i say id and that's it all this stuff around handling connection, executing the statement separately, everything having a try catch finally not needed. That's it. The delete to do also is done. So what we looked at until now is how easy it is to update something when you are using Spring. So when we are updating, all that we need is a query and the parameters to the query. We use the update method. This is the query to execute. And these are the parameters to pass. That's all we need to give it. The JDBC template knows about the database, about the data source connection, and it knows how to execute the whole thing and map this thing in there. And this is where the beauty of the Spring framework comes in. I mean, Spring JDBC comes in. If you want to still use queries, then I think uh, Spring JDBC is a very good option. Probably you can also check out IBATIS because it has really good uh, object mapping uh, kind of framework. If you don't want to use Hibernate, probably Spring JDBC or IBATIS might be good options to consider. Now, until now we saw how to do update statements. So we did an insert, we did a delete. I mean, these are kind of update statements which you can do using Spring JDBC. But now let's focus on how to do a retrieve. So I want to get some values from the database. How do I do that? 
that's what we would do next so the way we do a query is something of this kind jdbc template dot query and the query that i would want to use is select start from to do so this is the query i would want to use and what are what should i do with the particular results so this returns a set of results how do i really map the results from select star from to do to the to do object that's basically what we would need to define so i would want to map the results so select star from to do returns a few things from the database and those things here are mapped by using a constructor so the constructor is called with three different parameters and jdbc provides a default mapper the default mapper is bean property row mapper what this bean property row mapper does is if we look at the if we look at the structure of the to do table which we have defined in here it has a id it has description and it has is done these are the different things which are present in here it has an id description and is done if we look at our particular to do class which we are using in here the to do class also has the same thing id description and instead of is underscore done it's is done so i would want to map from a result from that to here the way you can do that is by using a bean property row mapper because these two things have similar names so id is matching id description is matching description and is done is matching is done because my java file and the database script have similar names i can use this bean property row mapper which would use reflection and it would set the values of that particular thing let's see what would happen when i run this example you'd see that all the code ran absolutely fine and we are able to now see the output containing all the list of to dos and we would see that the new to do from spring jdbc is also added in here so that's basically how simple it becomes to use spring jdbc you'd see that the amount of code which we had to write for these three methods is totally 12 lines whereas earlier when we were not using jdbc i mean we, when we were not using spring jdbc the number of lines in this particular method were i mean let's look at it how long so it's about 55 60 lines became 10 lines so it's almost a reduction of 80% in the number of lines that you had to do one thing which we did here was to use a inbuilt mapper but you could have also define a specific mapper to do the mapping in here so here we were using the auto mapping because our bean names match the columns in the database but if they didn't then we could have written a new let's now see how to do a custom mapping here we made use of the auto mapping from bean property row map i mean using bean property row mapper because our database and our bean definition had similar kind of things but if they weren't and if you want to implement the mapping yourself you can do a implementation of the row mapper interface so i can do a row mapper interface the thing which i want to use is a to do object i want to map to a to do object so now i can go ahead and implement the row mapper so i would say import row mapper and i would go ahead and add the unimplemented methods and now i can return a to do object using the row set so we already had this implementation in here which mapped the to do to the result set so i'll kind of use that particular thing and i would put it in here so i can say return new to do using the result set and this would get all the values from the result set and it would set into it into the to do object if i run this program it would run fine without a problem so you'd see that it ran fine and the other thing i could have done is instead of doing a new to do and setting everything in here i could have done something like this so i could have created a to do to do to do is equal to new to do i was using a constructor earlier i can use the setters as well which as it is done a lot of times so now instead of doing this i can say to do dot set id rs dot get int of 
I can do to do dot set description rs dot string of two and the last one which is to do dot set done to do dot set done this now the, this is a custom implementation of the mapper if I actually want, I can even take this and make it a class on its own. So I can say, I can say, uh, I can take this and create a class of its own. Let's say I want to use this to do mapper in multiple places. Then I can say class to do mapper implements. What does it implement? It implements row mapper so I can do something of this kind and now I have a to do mapper so I can use this to do mapper directly where we had the compilation earlier so I can say here new to do mapper so the advantage of this is now I can use the to do mapper everywhere so the to do mapper kinds of re becomes reusable so wherever I have to map from a result set to to-do, whether I'm getting all the to-dos, a specific set of to-dos, whatever. So I can start using this as a specific reusable mapper. I can even make it a public class and move it to a different package as well. All that kind of things can be done. And that's one of the reasons why Spring JDBC has become more popular than JDBC. Yeah, very few people use Spring JDBC directly. Probably some people use um, frameworks like iBatis or uh, a lot of people prefer to use an ORM like Hibernate. But I think it's very useful to understand Spring JDBC and understand what are the conveniences it brings in. Over. Hope you had a good time learning Spring in this particular tutorial. You will find more examples about dependency injection, inversion of control, Spring modules, JDBC, aspect-oriented programming, MVC, and a lot of that kind of examples on our Git repository, as well as links to a number of video tutorials. You'd find a list of more than 10 videos which you can look at to understand Spring even more on the GitHub repository. What's stopping you? Just go down there, look at all the examples and become an expert on Spring. And by the way, do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.